I texted Susie this week about the women's retreat, and I said I was going to show up dressed as a girl and kind of hide in. She told me no. So, no fun whatsoever. You guys are going to have a blast with that. It's going to be pretty vulnerable with you this morning. Does that work? 2.30 this morning, I was awakened and could not get back to sleep. So I went to war for you this morning. I went to war for this this morning because the enemy started to t- attack what I believe is truth that we're going to talk about today and started attacking it with me and I recognized the enemy. We'll talk about discernment in just a minute, but I recognized the enemy and said, no, not going to happen. So I'll tell you what happened then this morning, just before service starts during worship, my daughter calls me and says her car's dead. I get told by the video folks in the back, the video is not working. There's no audio. All these things were happening 45 seconds before I started preaching, the video came back up, and they're able to live stream this morning. You see, the enemy knows when he's been defeated. I'm going to say that one again. The enemy knows when he's been defeated. Yeah. Yeah. Living Water uh, Youth, I need your help with today. So um, so what I I just want, uh, this is going to be interactive, okay? So livingwater.com slash notes actually has my notes from today up there. I thought it was really important because I have a lot of scriptures I'm going to go through. It's going to be interactive today because you guys are going to help me read the scriptures, okay? So, and I'll I'll tell you why, and it's a little selfish for me, but um, COVID really attacked me from being able to read out loud. Just as I got COVID, I got got Bell's palsy, and I sounded really weird. You can ask my daughter. She thought I was really sick and needed to go back to the hospital, but it was Bell's palsy that did it. And when I'm tired, I can't read out loud. So will you guys help me read the scriptures today? Because we're not giving the enemy a foothold today. Not even a single foothold. And that includes that the scriptures may go different. That's why I gave you the notes. Because I think it's really important. We're talking about truth today. No, I'm not talking about little Johnny who lied on his test. I'm talking about the truth of the gospel today. That's what we're talking about. How many of you played Two Truths and a Lie as an, as an opener, right? I hate that game. It's, you know, and it's always in the openers because it's my, my wheel's got to go, okay, I can get Two Truths pretty easy, but the lie I've got to struggle with. That, that's by design. Because you're not designed to lie about things. You're designed to speak truth. And so if I were to ask you a few more questions on Two Truths and a Lie, it would take me probably one or two more to figure out what the lie was, because you can't defend it well. And today we're talking about defending the gospel and truth. And you see, you can defend what's true. You know what your birthday is. Somebody says, that's not your birthday. You can go, well, I got my driver's license. And you can throw out what truth is there, right? You can defend those things. Now, as Pastor Bob and I started putting this series together, we started reading books about defense of the gospel. We call it apologetics. And that's what we've been doing, is we've been doing apologetics for the last few weeks. If you didn't know that, that's what it is. It's apologetics. It's how do I defend the gospel. The funny thing about the the apologetics people that I follow is all but one of them were atheists when they first started studying the gospel. They, They wanted to prove themselves right. And they ended up getting immersed by the love and the truth of the gospel. And this is a quote from one of them. I can read the quote. I got the quote down. Okay? This is in the case for a Christ. If Jesus is who he claimed to be, then the truth about him is the most important truth in the universe. I got to read that one again. If Jesus is who he claimed to be, then the truth about him was the most important truth in the universe. And that's true. The funny thing is, as you start digging into things and you start being a skeptic about the gospel, the Holy Spirit's going to change your skepticism into what's truth. You see, you just can't win. The the enemy did not win this morning over us speaking. The enemy did not win over you probably having arguments before you came to church with your loved ones. Because guess what? You're here. Right? Right? So we're going to talk about, so misinformation, or what do they call it in politics, Pastor Bob? Fake news. Well, fake news works. <laughs> fake news works. You see, we're coming into a time of politics, and I'm not preaching on politics, so just re- take your guns and put them away. 
I'm not preaching on politics. But here's the deal, all right? Is the enemy loves to twist the truth and loves to confuse you and loves to create confusion in your life and throw things in the way. This morning when I was praying, I could have thrown my hands up and said, forget it, I'm not going to preach today. I could have. You could have, in your arguments, said, forget it, I'm staying home. Nothing against online. Hi, Mom. Hi, Nevaeh Smith. I told her I'd give her a shout out online. There's nothing against listening online. But God wanted you here today, and that's the truth. That's the truth. And a lot of times I think, ah, you know, that's not what it is. John 8, 31 and 32. Here we go. You guys ready to help me? Okay. So to the Jews, he, he did him. If you abide in my word and you're truly in the you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You know, it's funny about truth that it sets you th- free, isn't it? It's, it's funny how that works. Because if you do two truths and a lie, and you get stuck on the lie, and you don't want anybody to know what it is, it's not going to set you free. It, it's not going to work. And so if you, if you embrace lies, but the truth sets you free out of those lies, what are some of the lies? You're not worthy. You shouldn't preach the gospel. You shouldn't go to church. You're not good enough. Any other? Uh, That's okay. Don't say them. Because here's the deal. Those are all lies. And we're going to talk about that. But really, the thing about sharing the truth with people is it takes all that miscommunications out of the way. Because when I go to this, you can't go wrong. You see, this is the living word of God. Old Testament, New Testament. That's right, the Old Testament did not expire, folks. We often talk about how, who God was, is, who God is in truth, and he starts it off by saying, we made him in our image. And he's talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. This seems to tear people apart. They can't figure that out. But he's not just saying, I made them in mine. He says, we made them in our image. The truth of the gospel is right there. You're made in the image of God. Therefore, that truth stands with you, right? All right, here we go. John, oh, wait, we already did that. Ephesians. Now, here, I want to set the story for some of this. Paul talks to the church of Ephesus, the church of Corinth, and the church of Galatians. He's loving on them, but he's gently correcting them in truth. See, he's, the, he's, he's one of the daddies of the church. And a lot of times when he's writing these things, you think, oh, this guy's got it all together. He's generally in prison when he's writing these things. And he's giving the truth out of a prison cell. Kind of crazy, isn't it, to think that? So Ephesians 6.14 says this. What? Ready? Stand therefore, having and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, let me explain to you what this belt of truth is. It's not the one holding my britches up. Okay? These are britches from those of you who are not from the South. Okay? So it's not holding your britches up. What it is, is it's holding the armor of what you need to do to go into battle up. That's what it's doing. I got my first set of turnouts. I thought that was it. That gear that we throw on as firefighters. Those of you who don't know, I'm a firefighter as well for the next eight months. And after eight months, I'm all yours. So, so here's the deal, is you got to add some stuff to armor, and in that, it holds up the things that you need to do to fight. And one of the biggest things it is, is truth. Is truth to be able to do that. So you put that on, and it gives you righteousness with it, too. Now, as a firefighter, and especially as an EMS, I've been a paramedic for a long time, most of the time, a lot, especially this row right there, you were not even born when I started. So, because I've been a paramedic for 34 years. So not even close, huh? So I love this row, by the way. You guys are my, one of my favorites. Don't tell the rest of everybody else. But the youth row, you rock. Do I get a woohoo? There you go. <clears throat> you see, there's a nature to truth, and that nature is in our DNA. If you're a believer of the gospel, it's in our DNA. It gets woven in. Because here's what Jesus says in Ephesians 14, 6. You thought I was kidding about a lot of scriptures, huh? 
You, you know the funny thing is with pastor and I we do lunch with leadership. We hear from people. Uh, we, what we like about you is you preach out of the Bible. I'm yet to figure out what churches don't preach out of the Bible, but apparently they like that we preach out of the Bible, Pastor Bob. So here's what, here's what John 14, 6 said. Jesus said to him, what's that? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except for me. He's the way, the truth, and the life. It's our DNA. It's what's woven into us is that truth that's there. And we're sometimes we're really scared to share the truth, but in reality, there's nothing scary about sharing the truth. Because it's the way. This is a scripture that we share. This scripture we share when we lead people to Jesus. And we say, look, he's the way of the truth and the life. He's the only one. It's through him and what he did on the Calvary that saves us. That's the truth. That's easy to share. Now, maybe you struggle with that, but I'm going to give you some notes today in my notes on what to do in sharing the truth. And I hope they mean something to you as you get to that livingwater.com slash notes. And they just pop straight up. You see, if we put it in context, it's really important that we defend this. Who are we defending it against? We're defending it against the, the, the prince of darkness is who we're defending it against. But the funny thing is, even like today, we whipped him because we didn't let things put us on our heels. He may be the prince of darkness, but we serve a king of light. We serve a king of truth. And truth is an amazing thing when shared the right way. So we got a battle going on. A lot of people buy into this stuff. I can't go to church because of dot, dot, dot. How many times have you heard that? I go over to 507 and talk to people all the time, and that's one of the first things they say to me. I can't go to church because dot, dot, dot. And I look, and I go, no, no, it doesn't say that anywhere. <laughs> what Paul says is, is that I'm a human, and I mess up all the time. What did he say? He said, listen, the things that I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Oh, wretched soul. And he's just, he's a human. He's going, and this is the author of most of the New Testament. I don't want to jump off. It's the author of most of the New Testament is Paul. And he's going, I mess up all the time. So in truth and in love, guess what? We are going to fight, and we're going to fight against someone, and we're not going to let these excuses stop us from telling the truth. Ephesians 6.12, are you ready? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, and against the authorities, and against the cosmic powers presented in darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil. In so here's the deal. The enemy's already lost. The battle happened on Calvary. He bruised the head of, the, of Satan on Calvary. It was done. He hasn't won since. But he's trying. He gives it a shot. I can't go to church because dot, dot, dot. I can't talk to God because of dot, dot, dot. You fill in the blank, right? That's a lie from the enemy. Because guess what? Church, and, and another one that I hear a lot is the church hurt me. Well, McDonald's messes up your order all the time in the drive-thru, but you go back. You won't do that for church? See, that's not truth. That's the enemy trying to arrive, put a wedge in you and push you away from the light and push you away from truth. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not a war against me and someone else. It's a war of the spirit. And this morning, I recognized that at 2.30 this morning. I've been up since 2.30. Now, usually my ADD pops everywhere at that point. I've been up since 2.30 this morning. And when I recognized I bruised the head of, the, of, of Satan and I won that battle, I began to pray over all of you. And I didn't go back to sleep. I came to church and I prayed over you. That's not anything special to me. What it is is I recognized I was fighting a battle that was not one of flesh and blood and I was like, I'm not going to let this happen. And then I get to a church and everything starts falling apart. I don't care. We're going to go. This microphone can fall off my head. I'm still going to preach. 
We streamed it with my phone at the same time it was being streamed in the back. I didn't know that they had got it started. The enemy gives up. He's weak. He is weak, right? So there you go. Now we talk about like preserving the gospel. Now here's, here's the deal about this. How many of you know there's some fa false prophets out there? Some people who say they represent Jesus, but they don't. Now I'm really going to need your help on this one because it's a long scripture, okay? So they, they say that they represent Jesus, but they don't. And here's what Paul says about it. And I, and I actually chuckled when he, the first line of this, and you'll see. But this is what Paul said about it. I need your help. You ready? I'm astonished that you so quickly desert this is great grace and to turning for a different gospel. Now, well, there's another one, but there's some trouble, and you want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even when the angel should preach the gospel, it's preached, let him be accursed. As we said, no, I'll say it again, if anyone's preaching the gospel contrary, you see, let him be accursed. That's scary. That's scary. If you're preaching the gospel and you're doing it in contrary to this, those people should be scared. Because the Bible says they're cursed. That's what accursed means. It's scary. But there's a discernment of truth that you get as a believer that you go, mm, yeah, that's a little bit off. How do we discern it? Right here. That's how we discern it. Because everything else will fall away. But his word's going to stay true. And it's not changed since the little house in the prairie days. The these and the thous may be out of it. But the fact is, is it hasn't changed. And so what's scary is, and, and every pastor should be scared if they don't follow the truth. If they don't follow the truth. You see, Pastor Bob and I, we spend a lot of time on our messages and, and going through them. And then immediately after we get done with our message, we start getting beat. Now, we, the, he doesn't win, okay? I want to be clear. I should have said this. I messed up the scripture. This should have happened this way. And the funny thing is, is most of you don't even recognize it, but we're really good at beating ourselves. I'm not letting the enemy do that. You guys are helping me today. You're reading the scripture with me. I'm not letting the enemy do that. It, it, he can't win in all of this. We believe that we preach the true gospel. That how we know that is we use this right here. You see, when we get done with our notes, we send it out to our leadership team. Their job is to be our guardrails. You see something whacked in there? Say something. See something? Say something. You know, you, you really, you say something, you go, I don't know about that. And maybe you should do this. Jeff did that with one of my messages, and I was like, you are right. You are right on. And I changed what I said in my message because he did that. And so that's how we keep ourselves straight. It's super important that we do that because otherwise we, we make it about ourselves. And I don't ever want what I preach to be about me. I don't want it to be about my glory. I want it to be about his glory. All right. So how many of you, honestly, no, don't raise your hands, okay? You're just raising your hands in your head. You think, I can't go out and talk to people about the truth. It scares me. Well, we're doing apologetics. We're teaching you how to do that. You heard Jeff talk about it last week of just sharing your testimony with somebody because it's a real life thing. You see, I can't be fake because if I am, you guys will see through it because you have a good discerning spirit because you've been trained well, right? And so I just, I can't fake it. So what do we have to do? We have to know his word. That means you have to and open this thing. Now, I know, I know. Or you can do it on your phone. Those of you who are only electronically challenged and you just use electronics, I don't care. The Life Bible app is an amazing thing. I use it all the time to go back and forth. In the Hebrew, truth is called emet. Emet. You want to know the funny story about that? It's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the middle letter, and the end letter of the alphabet. Do you think that's on accident? No. They wanted to speak truth. Did I say that right, Mike? Okay. He's my Hebrew scholar. So, so know the word. 2 Timothy 2.15 says this. Do your best to present yourself 
to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. See, I don't have to be ashamed of the gospel. There's other people that have lived to write this gospel, and I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to talk to people about the gospel. And you know, the funny thing is, is and, and this just tags on to what Pastor Jeff was talking about. Sorry, I just did that prophetically. This just tags on to Jeff, what he said last week about just telling your story. You don't have to do the these and the thous to get there, but you have to spend time in here so you know what it is. So you can go back and forth and you can go, here's what the word says about that. This is, this is how we do this. And so it's really important that we spend time to know what it looks like. Now here's the next one, and, and this one's a little bit harder, I'm not going to lie. And this, this again is where the lie from the enemy steps into this, where you shouldn't be in church. Because he doesn't want you to learn the truth. He wants you to learn all the deception stuff out there. Oh, Christians don't have any fun. You missed my Shabbat message then. Because I was over here with the whole youth group jumping with them. You ought to come to a concert with me and my daughter. Because we do that, but unfortunately people get stand really close to us. We still do it. We get up in there and dance. Because you know what? Christians have a good time. They know how to have a good time, right? So here's, here's the deal. We know the word. Then the next thing we've got to do is we have to live the truth. Living the truth. So that means people see something different about you. And they go, I don't get what's different about you. What is it? And you then get to share the truth with them. And you get to say, well, you know, I'm a Christian. Maybe that's part of it. Can I tell you about some of the truth? Because it's really important. James 1.22 says this. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You see, I want to put this into action. I want to do with this. And you should be excited to do with this. I was talking to Nevaeh Smith about this when we first started this. And Nevaeh goes, I want to do apologetics. This is for you, Nevaeh. I want to do apologetics. I want to go out into the streets and share the gospel with people. Now, we don't do that by, I said this last time I preached, scaring the hell out of them. We love the Jesus into them. We show them your real life is what we do. And people see their, your real life and go, I want to be like you who wants to be like him. So you're doers of the word. You're spending time with this and away you go. So I got to tell you a story. I have a daughter that has the gift of truth. And sometimes that's a hard gift to have. So how do you speak truth into people and have them hear it? Well, you do this through gentleness and respect. Now, I can walk right up to you and I can say, Jeff, you're sinning. Yikes, that'd be really scary, wouldn't it? Or I can say, hey, brother, what's going on? How can I help you? What can I do to help you through stuff? You see, I can do this with gentleness and respect. This comes into 1 Peter 3.15, and it says this. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason to hope is in you. And yet, do it in gentleness and respect. You see, I'm a bulldozer. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. I'm a bulldozer. I, I'm not afraid of the gospel. I'm not afraid to tell people about the gospel. I'm not afraid. I, I'm just kind of born that way. I'm a firefighter. I'm a paramedic. We go in where other people are running out, and we go in anyways. It's just within, that's wrapped in me. But if you're doers of what truth is, you're then showing people, and like Pastor Mike said, you're representing Jesus to them. And they see that. Now, if I have the gift of truth, I can ram it down their throat, or I can, say, I can pray about it. I can go back into the word, find some really good scriptures that help me out. I can hide it in my heart. I can talk to that person about it, and I can guide them away from what, where they are. That's what the gift of truth is. And I'm very thankful that she's my daughter, and I'm very thankful that she's in my life because she speaks truth to me often. It doesn't scare me, it did when she was little. It kind of scared me, I'm not going to lie. It did. But she's learning 
to do it with gentleness and respect. You see, discernment comes from that, right? Discernment is the ability to look at something and go, that's not right. And then you go back into the word and go, why is that not right? And then you go, okay, I'm going to get a discerning spirit about this. And someone who has the gift of truth, which is all of you, by the way, has a gift of discernment as well. We were talking about it in a life group. If you're not in a life group, shame on you. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Life groups are amazing. You know why? I get to live life with my life group. I was honest with them. I was in a text chain this morning. Oh, this is a train wreck. This is what's going on. They're letting them know what was going on. And, you know, one of them was in Arizona saying, hey, I'm praying for you from Arizona. That's what life group is about. That is what it is. That's not really shame on you. I'm just kidding. It's, it's really the ability to have people speak into your life with respect and gentleness and have a good discerning spirit. You know, you can tell when someone's off, can't you? You look at them and you go, something's not right. As a paramedic, I teach people sick, not sick. And it's just when you look at somebody, you walk through the door and you look at them and you go, dude, you look sick. You do that in your head. You don't say it out loud. That, that's bad medicine, okay? You get in your head, it's sick, not sick. It drives you down a different way, and you do the same thing with the gospel and the truth. You look at them, and you go, I have a discerning spirit about this. They're really having problems, but I'm going to go back to the word, and I'm going to figure out a way to lift them up in truth and in life, and I'm going to tell them the truth of what it is. You see, being a beacon is pretty important. I got corrected today about being a lighthouse versus being a beacon. Thank you, my sister. Is that we're a beacon. People look at you and go, what is with you? And you get to say, hey, it's Jesus. It's the truth that's there. And then people aren't afraid to talk to you because you're real. You see, I go over to 507 and sit on a bar stool over there and talk to people left and right who are hurting. Jesus spent this much time in a church. He spent this much time outside. What's the Bible say? I came for them. I came for them. So apologetics is taking yourself out of a seat and going that way. Want to see apologetics? Look at that youth row right there. That's apologetics. That's an amazing apologetics right there. So that's, that's that, you know, seeking God for guidance. You know, that's the deal is that there are things that will just mess you up. And I love James. And if you ever want to get, you know, you go, okay, I want to be a good leader. I want to be a good person. I challenge you to read the book of James. I'll wait. It's only five chapters. No, I'm not kidding. You don't do it now. But the book of James gives you great guidance on what to do with this. And here's what James 1.5 says. If any of you lack wisdom, let him do what? Ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and will be given to them. You see, God just says, ask, I'll give it to you. You know, I, I, I try to be a mind reader. I really do. I try to go, and those of you in EHR, you'll laugh at this. May I read your mind for a moment? Nobody's laughing. If you're in my life group, you should laugh. Jeff, you should laugh too. But the fact is, is we're really bad at reading people's minds. We have to actually talk it out. And we have to actually go, hey, I have this discerning spirit about you. Am I right? And my youth pastor, you say, is it God or is it gas? You know, is it God or is it gas? Which one is it? I want to figure out which one it is. But, but it gives you that ability. All you have to do is you have to ask. We tend to, the enemy goes, ah, you don't have to ask. Don't say anything. Don't ask anything. But he says, look, all you have to do is ask, and I'm happy to give it to you. You see, God wants action out of us. God, I'm going to say that one again. God wants action out of us. He's got a hold of it. All you have to do is ask. Lord, I don't know how to talk to this person. Please give me wisdom and dig into this right here and go. Guess what? He's going to give you what's needed for that situation, right? Ooh, you guys are good. You guys are good. Now, listen, uh, we're not going to do this without opposition, by the way. We're, we're just not. There's going to be opposition out there. So, you can expect challenges, and I love how this is put, okay? So this is coming from Jesus out of the book of John, 15, 18 through 19, and here it is. If the world hates you, know that he hated, they hated me before. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, but because you're not of the world, but choose you of the world, Therefore, 
the world hates you. Anybody know who Paul Harvey is? All right, those of you who don't know who Paul Harvey is, this is a homework assignment. He does a talk, says, if I were the devil. Now listen to this. Here's a sentence out of if I were the devil. If I were the devil, I would make all things that are right wrong, and I would make all things that were wrong right. That was 40 years ago. Tell me that's not today. You're a Christian, you're wrong. You don't believe the same way I do, you're wrong. Even though you believe right, it's flip-flopped, isn't it? I challenge you to read it. It's a very pop, or listen to it. It's a very poppy deal. You can get it on YouTube. But you're going to look at it and go, that's my life. I see this. And that was 40 years ago that he did that. Funny story about Paul Harvey. My bus driver used to listen to him all the time. (laughs) And the end of this one, he goes, and he talked like this. To the man who robbed the bank in Ohio, we'll be seeing you. You dropped your wallet. (laughs) Paul Harvey had a a deal. My bus driver listened to him every day when I was going home. And that's the first time I ever heard if I were the devil was on my high school bus going home. No, junior high, junior high. You can expect challenges, right? The world does that. Now, how do we respond to criticism then, right? We got to do it this way. Romans 12, 21 says this. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's a hard thing to do. When evil hits you, you want to hit back. Let's go. Let's go. You want to be evil? I go, let's go. But here's what God's saying. Come on. I'm going to love you. That's really hard. I'm going to love you. I'm going to overcome this evil by not letting the enemy get a foothold in our conversation and in our life. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to love you. Good's going to overdo evil. Otherwise, all those movies you ever watch would be horrible. Because in the end, the good guy always wins, right? And so that's, that's really where this is coming from. You've got to be able to respond to criticism the right way. The right way. Now, in my notes, livingwater.com slash notes, at the end of this, there are 10 things in which are lies straight from the pit of hell and responses to those with scripture. If you, if you look at that, livingwater.com slash notes, got that? If you look at that, what, you, what it's going to do is it's going to give you an ability to framework anything that might fall into that. You'll read through 10 of them and go, oh, that is a lie, and that's how we fight it. So maybe the lie is, I'm not worthy. Find a scripture. Throw the scripture in there. Because you're going to hear that a lot from people. I'm not worthy. I can't, except for Josh, and you are worthy, wherever you are. He's Josh worthy. But, but he, I'm not worthy. That's, that's a big one. I can't go to the church because of this. Well, go back and find that same scripture I just said. Well, Paul, who was the writer of the the New Testament, said, hey, I mess up all the time. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, Me too. Pastor Bob too. You may not believe that. I barely believe it. Pastor Bob too. But all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means that that person that's talking to you is no better than you. Jesus died on a cross for both of us. Jesus started on the cross for those people. So during this, you may have been thinking, how do I make this happen? How do I I really make this happen? Well, listen, I just gave you a little bit of it, but it's right here. When you're running into a problem where somebody in your life is dealing with depression, be an overcomer. Share with them what true love is about, because that's what most of depression is, is this whole thing of the enemy telling you you're not good enough, I'm not good enough, and then you start buying into it. Well, brother, sister, if you're not good enough, I'm not good enough. Jesus died on the cross to make us good enough. Right? I'm just telling you. I get, that's an amen somewhere. So, you know, Jesus died on a cross to make us that way. Be the church outside these, these walls and get ready because it's coming, Nevaeh. It's coming. We're hitting the streets. And, here, it, and this is the deal. It, it's not standing with a megaphone on a box. It's talking to people who need to be talked to, going to where they're at. 
with a purpose and a mission, you go to where they're at. We're going to get together. It's going to happen. We're going to pray, and we're going to go hit the places that we need to hit. And we're going to hit them like a wind, and they're not going to know what happened because here's the deal. With love, truth, and respect, all of a sudden it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. For God so loved me that he sent his son for me. You see, what, what always has gotten me is that if I was the only one, he still would have sent Jesus. For me? I'm not worthy of that. But he makes me worthy through what he's done. And I know you have loved ones that you want to just beat the sense into them. I, I know. This is not the way you do it, by the way. You don't bring the word like that and use it as a weapon. I, I know. But if you do it with gentleness and respect and you live truth, people will see it. And they'll start asking you. They'll start opening up. And you tell people, look, I'm flawed. The things that I do, I don't want to do. The things that I don't want to do, I do. What's the deal? Oh, wretched soul of mine. The author of the New Testament. He's saying, I don't want to do the things I do, but I do them. You have the ability to do this. This is defending the truth of the gospel. And every single one of you, it's in your DNA. Jesus says, I'm the truth and the light and I'm the way. And then he goes out and tells you, make disciples who make disciples. How do you do that? You have a row of youth just like that who make disciples, who make disciples. Who make... I saw that row of youth about that big, and now it's that big. I've seen my 507 row be all the way across. And it's not just because of me. It's because of disciples who make disciples who make disciples. I mean, that's it. That's what we stand for, but it's truth. Don't buy into the lies. Use discernment, get into the Bible, use discernment, don't buy into the lies, and with gentleness and respect, bring them the truth. Can you do that? Somebody say yes, please. Thank you. Whew. Whoa. Was that pretty deep? Livingwater.com slash notes, okay? And use that as a tool for you. I'm sharing my, all my notes. I didn't tell my, share my stories, but I shared the framework of my notes for you to use to be the disciples who make disciples. Hopefully you like them and you go, okay, I can use this. This is great. I can go back. These are scriptures that I can use with Johnny, Sally, whoever it might be. I can, I can use this to help with this. And it's with love, discernment, and grace that you become a beacon. Do it, church. You can do it. And guess what? You're here today to learn how to do that, and we're here to always walk beside you. That's why we go to church. I don't need church to be a Christian. No, you don't need school, but it helps when you read later. I don't need to go to a restaurant to eat. No, but they cook it for me. You know, honestly, this gives you what you need to talk to whoever in gentleness, respect, and love. Love the Jesus into them and be doers of the word. That's why we're here. Will you pray with me? Father, I'm so grateful to be able to share your message of love and respect and gentleness. And I'm, and I'm so thankful that you died on the cross for me. It blows me away even today. And I've been a Christian my whole life, but I'm just so thankful that you did that. Now listen, church, there's some people here that maybe thought it was a mistake that they were supposed to be here. And maybe it's you. If you could just keep your heads bowed down for me. If this is the first time you've heard the gospel of truth and love and you want more of that, that scripture where Jesus says, you come through me and I'm walking with you to the gates of heaven. He says, I, I just have to repent. And that just means I have to leave it at the, at the foot of the cross. If that's you and you're celebrating today because you just heard the gospel for the very first time and you want more of this, will you raise your hand? Okay. If this meant something to you to kind of charge you up and it was speaking just to you, will you raise your hand? Now, all over the place. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
Father, we are grateful that in love, grace, and truth, that you sent Jesus to the cross to die for us. <laughs> Father, thank you that, that you've given us salvation and you've given us the desire to share your truth with people in love and respect. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory in your name. Amen.